<clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters coming together to celebrate the love of Christ. Let us acknowledge our sins and ask God's forgiveness. I confess, Almighty God, Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, I have made this sin in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. To my fault, to my fault, to my fault. <coughs> For I ask of Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, Pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Turn our hearts to you, eternal Father, and grant that seeking always the one thing necessary and carrying out works of charity, we may be dedicated to your worship. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, saying, This is the day the Lord your God commands you to observe these statutes and decrees. Be careful, then, to observe them with all your heart and with all your soul. Today, you are making this agreement with the Lord. He is to be your God, and you are the walk in his ways and observe his statutes, commandments, and decrees, and to hearken to his voice. And today, the Lord is making this agreement with you. You are to be a people particularly his own, as he promised you, and provided you keep, to keep all his commandments. He will then raise you high in praise and renown and glory above all other nations he has made and you will be a people sacred to the Lord, your God, as he promised. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Blessed, Blessed are they are who follow the law of the Lord. Blessed are they whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who observe his decrees, who seek him with all their heart. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. You have commanded that your precepts be diligently kept. Oh, that I might be firm in the ways of keeping your statutes. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. I will give you thanks with all upright heart. When I have learned your just ordinances, I will keep your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. Blessed be they who follow the law of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your heavenly Father. 
for he makes his sun, sun rise on the bad and the good, and causes rain fall on the just and the unjust. For if you love those you love you, those who love you, what compense, uh, recompense will you have? Do not the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brothers and sisters only, what is unusual about that? Do not the pagans do the same? So be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. We come to the last of the six ex uh, examples that Jesus gave us as illustrations of how he brings the teaching of the law to a higher and more perfect plane. So the Gospel of, of St. Matthew in chapter 5 tells us all this. So what we have read is the last part of the of the of the chapter. The saying that Jesus used today, which is very hard. You must love your neighbor and hate your enemy. In practice, as indeed is the case in many communities throughout the world as we see it in our daily life, as we hear it in the news. The saying of Jesus reflects the way many people feel is a justified way of acting. And as we saw earlier, on where Jesus spoke about anger, which you have read yesterday. At least limited revenge was condoned in the phrase, an eye for an eye. <coughs> Again, Jesus turns things on their head with a saying which many people would find quite unrealist. If not downright stupid. He tells us actually to love our enemies and to pray for those who persecute us. So the question is, how can we be asked to do such a thing? Yet if we would only reflect a little, the advice of Jesus makes a great deal of sense. And in fact, it's really the only way to go for our own happiness and, uh, and, uh, and peace. The only choice is what Jesus presented. To understand what Jesus is saying, we need to, to clarify the words love and enemies. Who are our enemies? They can either be the people that we are hostile towards or the people who are hostile to us. The practicing Christian who takes on board, on, on board the teaching of Jesus will want to have positive attitude to people in general and will not marginalize anyone on the basis of race, nationality, color, class, gender, or whatever. So such, such a person 
will not want to act in a way unnecessarily to create hostility in others. However, simply because we try to look and act positively towards others is no guarantee that they will act in the same way towards us. Though no objective fault of our own, we may become the object of their dislike. Resentment, hatred, jealousy, anger, and even violence. These are our enemies, and we are to love them. What does love mean here? What Jesus says. The word that the gospel uses is a verb from the noun agape in Greek. Agape is a unilateral way of loving by which irrespective of the actions or attitudes of other person, I desire their well-being. It is the love which God extends to everyone of his creatures. No one is exempted from this kind of love from God, irrespective of how they responded to him. And this it is quite different from the love which involves sharing, intimacy, affection, and a strong element of mutual giving. It is different. We are not being asked to love our enemies with the love of affection, to be in love with them or to be fond of them. That would not make sense and they would not want it. But we are asked to reach out and desire their well-being. This can be done when we focus our attention and our concern more on them than on ourselves. When we are the objects of other people's hostility, we tend to go on the defensive and, the, and to generate negative attitudes towards the other. Our inner security or our insecurity is under attack. Jesus is asking us rather to respond to the real situation rather than to react to the spontaneous feelings. When someone hates me, attacks me, is angry with me for no reason that I can think of, in a state of feeling sorry for myself, I will reach out and ask, what is wrong with that person? Why is that person acting in that way? What is bothering that person. Is there any way I can help to dissolve this, pro uh, this person's negative behavior, which is probably a sign of some inner self-hating or insecurity in their part? And certainly, when I began to think in this way, it becomes perfectly natural to pray for that person, to pray for their inner healing, for a restoration of peace and the inner security. To hate someone who hates me, to be violent with someone who is violent with me, simply means that there are twice as many problems as there were at the beginning. 
By responding in the way that Jesus suggests, we end up with no problem at all. And Jesus gives us another motive for acting in this way. It is the way God himself acts. He causes the heart, merciless sun to shine on the good and the all that the bad. The cool, refreshing rain falls equally on the bad as well as the good. What Jesus is saying is that God's love, his agape, reaches out indiscriminately to every single person, irrespective of their behavior. At the end of the reading, Jesus says, you must, you must therefore, therefore be perfect as thus as your heavenly Father is perfect. Perfection here refers to that unconditional agape, unconditional love that God extends to every single person. If we are to grow into the likeness of God and give witness to his presence in the world, we need to act in exactly the same way. So all these readings, what we have heard from for today, reminds us to do our best as we are in our journey of lunch. So let us be united in asking our loving God to give us the grace, the courage to do what he is telling us by his words that we may be perfect in our life. Trusting in God, let us present our prayers before him. For the church, may God continue to guide and bless her as we enter this holy season of Lent. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, be our prayer. For judges and practitioners of the law, may the Holy Spirit bless them with wisdom and honestly. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the imprisoned, may the love of Christ enter their hearts, bringing hope and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord be our For the faithful gathered here, may God bless our Lenten practices of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord be our for our beloved dead, especially for Richard Gaddy, for whom this Mass is offered, May they soon be welcomed into the heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful and loving God, we present our prayers before you and we ask you to be with us that we may be united in loving one another and we will love you above all we have. And we ask this, so Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have received the bread we offer, the fruit of the earth and the work of human hands, which will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May these blessed mysteries by which we are restored, O Lord, we pray, make us worthy of the gifts they bestow through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is true, right, and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from distorted affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with, the, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves have turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled. O Lord, the sad, converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that the same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and the resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, Paul, our Archbishop, Isabius and Daniel, auxiliary bishops, Peter, Sartan, retired bishop, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship, bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the face of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be.
Anybody can help us. The blood of Christ. The blood of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. The blood of Christ. Amen. Blood of Christ. The blood of Christ. <coughs> the blood of Christ. The blood of Christ. The blood of Christ. The blood of Christ. Blood of Christ. The 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 blood of Christ.
Let us pray. Show unceasingly favor, O Lord, to those you refresh with this divine mystery, and accompany with salutary consolations those you have imbued with heavenly teaching through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads for God's blessing. May the blessing for which they have longed strengthen your faithful, O Lord, O God, so that never strain from your will, they may always rejoice in your benefits through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, proclaiming the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>